Well, everybody, welcome to our Expedia Cruises Thursday night travel talk. Tonight, our special guest is Paul Gerard, Director of Sales North America for Atlas Ocean Voyages. Everyone on this call is muted. You do have the ability to turn your video on or off. We'd love to see your faces. I uh, feel in this COVID world, sometimes we don't interact with people. So if you feel comfortable, please put your video on. We will be taking uh, questions. There is a chat feature. So please feel free to put your questions in chat and we will answer them at the end of the meeting. My name is Lisa Anflick. I'm one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. Our travel talks are being hosted by the six Expedia Cruises locations in the Edmonton area. It's been a long road since March, 2020 when travel changed for the world. If you're on this call, you probably love to travel. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And if you're like me, you're missing it. Good news, cruising is back. Cruise ships started to sail this past June. We've had many months now of ocean cruising, sailing in Alaska, the Caribbean and Europe. Cruises have operated safely with the highest health protocols and cruising is by far the safest way to travel. And most of the cruise lines now have a majority of their fleet sailing. At our Expedia Cruises stores, we've had passengers recently come back with rave reviews. They were thrilled to get back on a ship and have the wonderful experience that only a cruise can provide. I, I will say the travel is a little bit more complex at this time. Now more than ever, the advice of a travel consultant is needed. And our consultants are here to help you navigate the new complexities and make sure your vacation is safe and seamless. I'm always amazed if people say they can book their own vacations. There are things that I could do on my own. I could cut my own hair, I could do my own taxes, but I prefer to leave those things to the experts. What you will receive when you book with a travel agent is the following, expertise. There are truly hundreds of different cruise ships and cruise lines and a travel agent can help you pick the right one for you. Pricing, our pricing is never, you'll never get a better price than book booking directly with the cruise lines. And many times a travel agent will have a better price. At Expedia Cruises, we block group space on hundreds of sailings and can offer better pricing and amenities such as shipboard credits than booking directly with the cruise line. Information regarding passports, visa, entry requirements, and more now than ever, pro, uh, COVID protocols that are constantly changing. We can keep you up to date with what is needed for your specific trip. We are also here to assist in emergencies or when problems occur. We have the ability to plan your entire vacation. You don't have to go to different places to plan everything. We can take care of your air, your land, your transfers, your, your tours, et cetera. If you are ready to travel, we are ready to help. You may not feel comfortable traveling at this moment, and that's fine. But the right time, it is the right time to plan. Studies have shown approximately 40% of the pleasure of the trip comes from planning one. Last year has been challenging for all of us. And one of the things that makes me smile is the thought of where I can start traveling. My bucket list has become a to-do list and I can't wait to start traveling again. Time has passed and like you, I have much to make up for. Whatever your dreams are, our Expedia Cruises consultants can help, them make, help make them come true. We are committed to finding you the best value for your travel dollars. And we can, as I said earlier, help you with your entire trip so it's seamless. Best of all, we are in your neighborhood so you can shop local. So please sit back and relax and let's start exploring the world and dreaming of your next vacation. I'd love to introduce our special guest, Paul Gerard, Director of Sales, North America, Atlas Ocean Voyages. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Lisa. I'm happy to be here. I'm gonna share my screen, I hope. Uh, let's see here. Get this there. And whoops, we want to go to the PowerPoint, don't we? Why oh. is it not doing this? Don't we love the technology? Yeah, we do, don't we? <laughs> Come on. Here we go. Here. I think we had it. Uh, 
not quite in presentation mode yet. We can see yes. all the side screens. I gotta get this down to where I can do slideshow. Beginning. We're getting there. And looks like we're there. Good. Okay, see it, display settings. Is everything showing well on your end? Yes? Thumbs up? Okay, here we go. That's me up in the upper left. Uh, I'm not sure if, if the senior reflects my age or my rank, but either way, I'm happy to be the Senior Director of Sales North America for a brand new cruise line called Atlas Ocean Voyages. And you probably haven't heard about us, but I'm gonna put a face to us here. I've got a short video. It, I'm gonna hope it plays. Here we go. Paul, I'm loving the, the pictures of the ship. It, it, we're not hearing anything. I don't know if they're supposed yeah, to be this, any. I, I used to try to narrate, but I can't, if I turn that music down, it turns me down. All right. Well, I have to but say that ship, ship, lo ship, lo ship looks like absolutely turn. beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So this is called the Dome. Uh, it's up on deck seven. I'll come back to that when we... I'll reinforce a lot of this during the presentation. It's almost over. Got about, we're gonna see the uh, L'Occitane Sea Spa. That's where we're going right now. Oh, that's where I would be.
Okay, so I, I, I show that, I know it doesn't have any, any narration or the like, but it gives you a feel for the vessel. Um, a lot of, I don't have a lot of pictures, so I hope the video gave you a feel for it. Anyway, we are a brand new small ship, expedition capable, uh, bucket list destination kind of cruise line. Uh, we started in the pandemic, so our timing might could have been better, uh, but as we were building the ship, we got to build in things that make us more pandemic proof, I guess is the word I want, uh, than others, uh, others had to adjust their, their hardware, we were able to build to it. Uh, we're based in Fort Lauderdale, uh, our headquarters in the US is Fort Lauderdale, uh, as, as I've already said, we are a new brand, new all-inclusive, we call ourselves Lux Adventure, I'll, I'll speak to that. We are a small ship and we debuted in August. Our owner is this gentleman by the name of Mario uh, Ferreira. He's a Portuguese billionaire. He started as a waiter on a cruise ship. Now he owns cruise lines, uh, including Atlas. Uh, Mystic Invest is the parent company. Uh, if you know anything about river, uh, one of the finest rivers to cruise on is in Portugal. It's called the Douro River. He owns the Douro Azul River Cruise Line. He owns uh, Nico Cruises, both river and ocean. They cater to the German market. Atlas is catering to the North American market. Um, he owns amusement parks and, and, and other things, hotels. In fact, he purchased CNN Portugal recently. So he's very wealthy, very diversified, very committed to making uh, Atlas uh, a brand that will be a, a prime jewel in his uh, collection of, of travel products. Um, we are, uh, as I said, an all-inclusive cruise line. Um, we are a small ship cruise line, and I'll put some faces to, to some of these things here shortly adventure. So we're, we're, adventure means different things to different people. To some people, it might be mountain biking. To some, it might be walking down to the local pub on the corner. Um, that would be my, more my adventure. But we're, in our range of shore excursions that we offer in all of our ports, they'll run the gamut from a typical um, four-hour bus and walk tour to things like you're seeing here, whitewater rafting, mountain biking, you name it, we'll be doing it. And when we're in expedition type destinations, we'll be doing the Zodiacs, landing on the ice in Antarctica, that kind of thing. So we are um, going to be uh, a mixed, a hybrid of an expedition and a small ship uh, luxury cruise line. On the left-hand side of the slide, you're looking at uh, these are the things that we include in our version of all-inclusive. Everyone sort of has their own uh, different views of what all-inclusive means. We're, we're going to bullet point ours here. So we include air from 15 North American gateways this year. We hope to grow that to 30 next year. And if you get as many as a half a dozen people, we'll create a gateway for that, that small of a number. So if, if we need to get one closer to you, we can certainly look into that. For Antarctica, we've chartered a jet that flies nonstop from Orlando to Ushuaia. And uh, especially the agents who are listening to me know uh, that's not an easy place to get to, uh, but we're, we're gonna make it easy for our guests that are going to uh, Antarctica this winter. Uh, all of our expeditions are fully guided. We do landings on the ice. We have a dozen Zodiacs. If you're not familiar with the rules of travel to uh, Antarctica, if you're a ship of 200 or less guests, you can put 100 ashore at a time twice a day. So effectively, everyone on the ship can get onto the ice every day that you're down there. If you're in a ship 300, above 200 to 500 guests, you can only put 100 ashore once a day. And if you're more than 500 guests, you cannot put anyone on the ice. You can just cruise by. My point in all this is a, a ship our size, we carry 196 guests. We're able to put 
everyone on every day that the weather allows while we're down there. I'll go back to the inclusions now. So we include things like kayaks and paddle boards. We include one complimentary shore excursion in every port. Our cuisine is uh, gourmet and international. We try to match it up to the areas that we're cruising in. So one side of the menu in the dining room is what we call the classic choices. The other side, the left side is the local cuisine and you can jump from side to side, mix and match that kind of thing. All of the drinks, wine, beer, and liquor are included. Um, you, you may not have noticed it in the video, but we focused on what looked like beer taps. Those are actually still and bubbly water that you can fill in a aluminum container that we give every guest so that we're not putting more plastic into the world and into our oceans. We're very sensitive to that. We use uh, paper and the wood stirs and those kinds of things, recyclable items uh, so that we're not uh, causing problems. Your gratuities are included. We have butler service in our suites. Uh, we offer included uh, standard Wi-Fi. Luxaten provides our uh, bath amenities and runs our spa. And we also include emergency evacuation and return insurance for all of our cruises, not just the uh, expedition ones. The feel of the ship, I hope you found it attractive. Uh, the two gentlemen on this slide are responsible for that. They're very well known in Europe, haven't done a lot of work in the North American market, but we're really happy with what they uh, provided us. Uh, so that they're responsible for that. We are big, again, in addition to the, the things I alluded to earlier, the, the plastic and the water and all those things, we're, we're able to have state-of-the-art engines and those engines can move us propellerlessly in places where that's a good thing to do. So anytime there's uh, wildlife present, we're gonna make sure that we're not endangering them in any way. We're not even gonna rough up the bottom of the ocean. We, want, we can position ourselves without an anchor. Our engines can be programmed to hold a spot. So the ship has been built to the standards that um, are environmentally friendly and play into the way we, we want to carry this product forward in the current uh, world environment. Some other stats that are important about us, again, we're a small ship, we carry only 196 guests, 98 rooms. We have a lot of crew though, one crew for every 1.4 guests, um, 98 uh, balcony and suite accommodations. We have multiple dining options, I'll speak about those. You saw in the video the two main, two main lounges. Uh, I'll talk about the entertainment in a bit. We've got a heated pool and uh, two hot tubs. Uh, you saw the fitness studio and the Loxitan Sea Spa. Water's Edge is that front part of the vessel. Uh, we have some heated benches down on that uh, deck five so that you can get close to the water. Uh, if anything is happening there, you can do it without having to go ashore. This is uh, the deck plan. We have uh, eight decks. Deck three is where the mud rooms are. So when you come back from any kind of expedition, uh, we provide boots and parkas and the like. Everyone has a locker down in that room so that we're not bringing back any of the, the things that you might step in along the way. The penguins uh, make, make for dangerous steps at times. Uh, and not, not that they're personally threatening, just the things they leave behind, trying to be gentle here. Uh, and so that, that room allows us to make sure those kinds of things aren't coming onto the vessel proper. Uh, the state rooms are on deck three, five, and five, six, and not seven, three, five, and six. We'll talk more about the state rooms. Deck eight is a jogging track. It's about 12 miles, 12 laps to the mile. Um, our deck plan is such that we really have three categories. 10 suites that range from 382 to 465 square feet. Uh, there's two of the navigator suites, two of the journey suites, and four of the discovery suites. Uh, and we have the rest are veranda categories, some slightly larger than the other. I'm going to show you an actual picture. Uh, because our owner builds ocean and river ships, 
he's got an interesting thing happening on our, our ships, and I'll speak to that. So this is one of our suite categories. And in a true suite, you have a separate sitting room area, separate bedroom area. So this is what that would look like on our vessel. Remember, there's three categories of these. Here's where you'll see my earlier comment. So on the left is a traditional, what I'd call ocean veranda. We've got the sliding glass doors that will open to a proper outside of the ship sitting area, a, a balcony, a veranda, however you wish to call it. On the right-hand side, you see more of the river uh, balcony concept where that top pane of glass on that wall comes down to form a railing uh, as if it were a veranda. So effectively, part of your room or your room itself is sort of the veranda in that case. So you can choose either one, uh, maybe in a warmer climate, the, the one on the left, in a colder climate, the one on the right. If, you're, if you fancy more room in your room, you're getting that with the room on the right because it's not carving that veranda space away from the room. Because remember, every room has to come to the edge of the ship. So on the, on the one on the left, the veranda railing is at the end. Here, your room stretches to the right to the side of the ship. So that's just a, a point that you fancy one over the other. The only category that we have that's not uh, a veranda, we have about 12 rooms. Uh, they're 183 square feet. After, during Antarctica, our Antarctica staff, who you'll see later, will use those rooms. So whenever you go to these expedition places, you basically bring your tour operator with you because nobody lives in Antarctica. So you bring them along and they need rooms, so they'll be in those rooms. After Antarctica is over, we're gonna make that a solo room. So a single person would have that room, they would pay no single supplement, the rate on the, on the brochure will be the rate for one person to have that, that stateroom. That's pretty unique. I think my agent friends will, will concur. Normally, uh, there's not a category that's dedicated strictly to singles, but we will have that. And in the middle of the slide, you see the things that are common to every room, uh, the queen size beds, the, the TVs, uh, all the Bluetooth connectivity, fully stocked refrigerator, digital safe. Uh, the marble bath you see on the bottom left-hand side, in the suites, that would be a double vanity, a double bowl uh, vanity in, in the bathroom. We've got the hair dryers, the robes, the slippers, daily makeup and turn down, 24 hour room service and complimentary uh, Wi-Fi in the state room and in the public areas. So that gives you a feel for that. In the video, you did see the gym and spa and um, um, spa area. So I won't, belabor those points. In fact, the next slide shows you that very, very thing. So we do have that. Uh, by the way, that would be one of the non-inclusions is, is the spa. So that would be some place where uh, you'd have to chip in a little bit to, to get that experience. The dome, you saw this on the video, it's up on deck seven and it has a 270 degree viewing um, opportunity. So whenever we're in a really nice place uh, to see things, people will collect here. During Antarctica, we'll serve like soup, hot chocolate, things to warm you up. So that if you go outside for a little while to see things come back in to warm up. And then of course you can take the Zodiacs and actually go on the ice. As a small ship, we have the kind of entertainment that is common on small ships. So it won't be the big, uh, the big band kinds of things or the, or the big production shows. It'll be individual entertainers who are outstanding in, in their own field. We had a gal who's performed lead roles on, in Broadway, Cats, Les Mis, uh, and Joseph uh, that lady performed songs from those shows, outstanding entertainment. We're big on lectures, piano player uh, plays before and after dinner. So lots of uh, smaller scale, for lack of a better term, kinds of entertainment will happen during the course of the, of the cruise. Uh, alternative dining, different dining options uh, we also have. Porto is the main dining room. You saw that fairly prominently uh, in the video. Seven aft is out by our pool and it's a, uh, a steakhouse, a very small steakhouse. 
And it features a, a European grilling technique, Jasper, Jasper. Anyway, it's kind of like Ruth's Chris, that, that very high flame uh, cooking of the steaks, outstanding. The dome, which we just left a couple slides ago, serves a light lunch uh, during days at sea. And the same place we have seven aft during good weather days will serve sandwiches, salads, hamburgers, hot dogs uh, out by the pool as well. And you might not have caught it in the video, but Paula's Pantry is sort of a grab and go restaurant. So not unlike if you have a, a place like Starbucks where in the morning, not only do they have the coffees, but they have the breakfast sandwiches and those kinds of things. And we'd be similar to that. Around noontime, it'll switch over to sandwiches, pizzas, um, salads, lunch fare. So you, you grab it and go find a table and like that. So that's Paula's uh, pantry. And of course, we also offer uh, 24 hour room service. Oops, went the wrong way here. Um, oh. All right, I jumped a couple of slides, so I'll try to go back. Oh, instead I went forward. <laughs> here we go. So we're gonna be eventually a five ship operation. And this slide will update where we are. So the big one on the left is now, has been sailing since August of uh, this year. And she's being pulled out for her sea trials in that middle, middle picture. She obviously passed because she's now sailing. Our next ship, bottom middle, is called World Traveler. And this slide's about seven months old. So you can see how far along that, that ship is. Not so much on the painting end, but the, the rest of it. Uh, she's scheduled to join us next July. So July 15th, uh, World Traveler will have her inaugural cruise. And World Seeker, we're looking for fall of next year. It could sneak into the beginning of 2023. Uh, so she's bottom right, that's the keel. Uh, a little ways to go on that one, obviously. But just so that you see that this is not uh, just smoke and mirrors, we are actually doing keeping right on schedule thus far. So our whole thing is extraordinary de destinations, unique itineraries and expeditions uh, in both the Arctic and the Antarctic. But these are the other places we go. So I, I don't beat the drum heavily about our expedition capabilities. It's great that we have them and we use about 35% of our year would be the Arctic and the Antarctic. The rest of the year we're doing traditional itineraries like this year we did uh, the Greek Isles in Egypt, uh, a bit of the Western Med. We then crossed the Atlantic, did one Caribbean cruise and then headed down to Antarctica. This coming year we'll come back up the coast of South America, shoot over, the existing ship will start in the Med, but as the traveler comes out, she'll take over in the Med and our existing ship, the Navigator, will head up to Northern Europe where we'll do the British Isles. Uh, we'll do some Arctic uh, expedition cruising, Greenland, Iceland, and the, uh, the northern part of Norway, way northern part of Norway. We'll do some Baltic cruises uh, and transatlantic and on the, I forgot British Isles as well. When we have two ships approach South America next fall for the Antarctica season, one will come down the east coast of South America and one will do Central America and then the west coast of South America. So as we get more ships, we'll do more and more itineraries. Uh, Antarctica is a big destination for any expedition cruise line, and we'll be there with there right now. We're on our third Antarctica cruise. This year we'll do um, nine, 11 cruises. Uh, nine of those are nine nights, and two are 12, where the Antarctica solar eclipse happened right now. The last day of that cruise is tomorrow. So those, the eclipse comes once every 400 years down there. <laughs> so I'm sorry to say that we probably missed our one down there for at least my lifetime, I'm gonna to admit to that. 
Uh, but the uh, I'll give you a peek at the itinerary. So that's the nine day one is on the left and you see the frequency of the dates on that one. One date for the solar eclipse. And we still have one more 12 night left and we'll do that on February 2nd. Uh, we actually have two other cruises down there but they're chartered so they're not showing in this uh, schedule. And again, as I mentioned, because of our size, we're allowed to, to put 100 people on the ice twice a day. We include those Zodiac landings are, are part of the included experience. They would be the complimentary shore excursion down that way. You can also do uh, standing paddling. You can do kayaks. Uh, we even have a program where you can sleep on the ice. I don't know why anyone would want to, would want to jump out of a perfectly good plane or sleep on the ice when you can see your beautiful cruise ship yards away. But for those who do want to do that, we will, we will have it. It's actually waitlisted amazingly. Uh, and it costs a, a little bit of money as well. Um, we provide the parkers, you'll get to keep them. The boots and binoculars will, will land you for the duration of the, the sailing, but you will get to keep the binoculars, as I say. This is the look of our uh, expedition team. Uh, if we took them out of central casting, I think this is the look that you'd want. But uh, Henry Paul Wolf, our expedition leader, will be going for his 60th plus time uh, to Antarctica. He's a glaciologist. Uh, like the weathermen get all excited when, when the snow comes in, this guy gets excited every time he goes to uh, Antarctica. And he's going to lead this team and show everyone what's, what's up down there. One of the big things we have is this uh, Airbus 330 that we keep in Orlando. And again, we'll fly nonstop from Orlando to Ushuaia. That's a 12 hour flight. Uh, and all of our gateways will feed um, from wherever the gateway would be, for instance, let's say Boston to Orlando. Uh, if people have to overnight because of the connection, we, we'll pick up the hotel cost. Uh, so some of those West Coast where you guys are, it may involve uh, an overnight, uh, but we'll, we'll include that in the uh, process. Our, our pricing does include this jet and the, and the local air, not only on Antarctica, but on all of our uh, sailings. I'm going to give you a peek at some of our itineraries just because I think they are uh, unique. Um, again, we, we're a small ship, less than 10,000 tons. So we can do some really small ports. So that'll be the inaugural version. Here's the expedition cruises we'll do in the Arctic this coming summer. Uh, so you, you'll have your Greenland, Iceland uh, combination. Uh, Longyearbyen is part of Norway, way north of the Arctic Circle. Uh, you can see on that first slide, the dotted line is the Arctic Circle and that, uh, Svalbard and Longyearbyen are past that. Now, if you fancy good internet reception, that's not the place to be because <laughs> it's sort of the part of the planet that uh, doesn't see the satellite that much. So know that if you head up to the Arctic. Uh, but here we'll go to more traditional itineraries. So you see in the middle, a very port intensive Norway cruise. You'll see all the fjords and end up uh, getting a little bit of uh, United Kingdom there, Ireland, Scotland. Uh, a British Isles a cruise, Ireland and, and London on the one on the left, and a very intensive uh, British Isles cruise on the right. By the way, we dock, if you see that first uh, itinerary on the left, June 17th and 18th, you'll notice that we're docking in London, Tower Bridge. Most cruise ships dock uh, on the coast of the ocean there, but with us, you're right in uh, downtown London. One of the, again, advantages of the small ship. We'll do some Western um, Europe. You see that here as we come from the north back down to the Med, some interesting uh, itineraries. Uh, we'll do the Baltic as well. A couple of Baltic cruises there. Again, so these are traditional itineraries. By the way, on, the, on both of these, you see a keel. Keel is another canal uh, that you have to be a very small ship to get through. I'm gonna show you an, another canal even smaller momentarily. 
and so here we are with some more Mediterranean uh, type cruises. We have some that, uh, okay, this is the Corinth Canal. And as you can see, you couldn't be much larger than us and make it through this particular, uh, but this is a, a shortcut that gives you more uh, time in port uh, in the Greek Isle area. Uh, and I mentioned this earlier, as we make our way to and from Antarctica, we can do different crossings, different pieces of South America. So you see that here, uh, this year it was the East Coast. Uh, next year we'll have one on the East and West. Here you see that, that very thing. Uh, in the middle uh, slide up top, you see that Central America cruise. You won't see that in, in many uh, cruise brochures. So that's a very unique one. And as we're going through, I hope you're also noticing our length of cruise goes from seven to 16 days, lots of uh, shorter cruises, some longer ones. Uh, we feel that the first thing you'll get from us outside of a brochure, your document packet is, sends you the first feel of Atlas. So we really put a lot of uh, investment into an impressive package not shown are two metal luggage tags that have your name engraved on them. And they're affixed to your suitcase in such a way that the luggage tag's more likely to survive than the suitcase. Uh, but anyway, that's the first touch and we want you to get a, a good feel for that. Uh, this kind of recaps all of the things I've talked about. So we are an all-inclusive product. We call it all-inclusive all the way. We do include that uh, economy air. You can buy up to business class if you wish. We include the charter jet in Antarctica, uh, at least one shortest version in every port, the emergency evacuation and return insurance. We offer a 20% uh, military discount to our uh, veterans, active and retired. Uh, and well, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> so we, this is actually geared more to our agent partners. We have a training uh, module there. And this is the one I wanted to get to. We just kicked off a promotion for about a week ago for any cruise booked by next March and you will get $1,000 per person, 2,000 per stateroom, provided it's a double savings, provided you book through one of uh, the travel advisors that work, works with us and the wonderful people that are putting on this show tonight at Expedia Cruise Centers are among those agents. So, and among the best of those agents. So this is available through March 31st, but don't wait that long because everyone's gonna avail themselves of this very significant savings. And with only 196 beds on any given itinerary, things do go fast, especially the more popular ones. But right now we do have a, a great um, availability. Unlike cruise lines that pre-existed the pandemic, who when they were faced with having to cancel cruises had to move people, uh, let's say from 20 or even the first half of 21 into a future date because of the pandemic, they, they may not have much space in 22 because of all of that movement, all of that uh, conden condensing all those past cruises into the future. We didn't have that. <laughs> so we're plenty available in 2022 because we didn't have to move anyone. We didn't start cruising until uh, this August when, as indicated in the opening statement, the cruising came back. So I would, I would, say one thing to you, if I learned any lesson the last 18 months or so, it was that time is not given to us. <laughs> we, everyone has their bucket list and they think, you know, in a few years I'll do this, in a few years I'll do that. Well, there was a wake up call we just got over the last 18 months that you can't assume things like that, that, that the time will always offer you the chances to do these kinds of things. And so don't, don't delay. <laughs> do your travel when you can and do plenty of it because to, I'm personally a believer that the greatest way to make this world peaceful is through travel. 
if we see and understand different cultures, we will get along with them far better, I feel. So I'm getting off on esoteric things, but nonetheless, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So I'll take any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Paul. What, what a beautiful ship, what fabulous itineraries. I, I truly am amazed at what a wonderful product. And, and yes, very nice to know that there will be space because one of the challenges we do have right now is, is space. So there are some questions that we'd like to talk about. Um, one of the questions, will do you do in Antarctica a polar plunge experience? We do. We do indeed. And that one's a complimentary one. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you should be paying me to get into the ice yes. water, but... <laughs> um, are there any Canadian gateways? Well, you mentioned 15 gateways in North America. Yeah. Which are the Canadian ones, please? I think, I think we're um, Toronto, Vancouver. Uh, but again, if, if you get three, two, three, four couples, um, we'll, and even if it's not a gateway, whatever little bit extra it would cost to, to get you there, we... We're not an airline, we're a cruise line, so we want to get you to the ship. So we'll make it as easy and as affordable as possible beyond those other gateways. If you do wonderful. a group, for sure we'll give you the gateway. Yeah. Okay. So. Sounds wonderful. Uh, I noticed, do you, did you have any back-to-back -back discounts? Because I see that many of your cruises go and continue on, you know. We do. We do. It's 5%. So for every, every one you do, you'll get 5% on each Combo one. Yep, you do have it. All right. Currency, US, Canadian, both? Uh, for, for paying for the cruise, currently just US. Yeah. On board, we are actually, no, we're, we're, we're at the dollar on board as well. Yep, we are. Okay, all right. And in terms of, uh, everybody likes flexibility right now and not having a risk. Are the deposits refundable? Uh, the deposits are mostly refundable. We have and a lot, lot of cruise lines have a, an admin fee that will keep, but you can use it on a future cruise. And that's two, 250. So what we've done, our, our normal deposit for a suite is 1500 and for uh, a, a non-suite is 1000. We've cut those in half. So it's currently 5750. And of those, it would be the 250 uh, admin fee that would roll over to a future cruise. So all but that amount would, would come back. Okay. When, the, when the pandemic was really stronger or, or more prominent, we had some booking periods where we totally took the risk away. So if you booked within a three month window of time, you could get 100% of the money back at, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the situation. And if we feel we have to go back to that kind of thing, we will. Um, as you know, daily, it, it's some days you think it's looking like the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel is bright. Other days you, you wonder where the light went. But uh, right now, I think the most painful part of travel is those darn PCR tests. <laughs> So. Which brings me to my next question. If, if that is still a requirement coming back to Canada, do you offer the testing for Canadians on board? Yeah. So I don't know if you know this, the U.S. just went to, you need it to come back and it has to be within 24 hours. So, you, so we will be doing it on the ship. We're, we're going to have to. So right. if yours is uh, 48, you got you, you got two extra days that we, the U.S. currently won't have, but because of that uh, situation, we, we will provide them on the ship for people to get back. Um, on the way to the ship, we don't, you know, people tend to have connections in their own town, and if not, there's actually a, a place in the Miami airport, not, uh, Orlando airport, that if, especially if you came a day early. They can give you the results in about three hours, but you need to make an appointment. 
So failing being able to find anything uh, in, in Canada that would fit the window. For Antarctica, we, we do have, and when I did our cruise to Egypt, we were given tests on the ship to get into Egypt. And then in Egypt, we, we got tested, uh, Atlas provided it, and that got us to be able to fly home. So, and we give an antigen test when you board the ship, even if you've had the PCR test. <laughs> so there's lots of testing going on, but it, uh, we've had one person, it was on the inaugural cruise that tested positive. And here's what we did. Okay, so we were in Crete, we started the sail and we did the testing during the two days at sea on the way to Egypt, one person tested positive. We had to go back to Crete, leave that person there. Then, then we lost time. We flew all guests to Cairo in charter jets, put them up at the Four Seasons in Ritz-Carlton, operated all the shore excursions complimentary, food and beverage all included at the hotel. And so for one person, <laughs> all that happened. We delivered all the product that we would have delivered. Um, so if, if showing what a product does in, a, in an emergency helps, I give you that as testimony that we're trying to do everything we can to make this a great trip in the environment that we're now in. So. Well, I think that I think that makes people feel very comfortable knowing that a cruise line is going to take care of you, protect you, and do what is right, not so much focused on the dollar. So that's wonderful to hear. Are talking about the dollar for a moment? Are there any Canadian resident discounts? You are in U.S. dollars. I know some cruise lines for Canadians they do give us a little bit of a discount. You know what? I'm going to suggest that tomorrow. Wonderful. We, we are coming up with some other promotions, and that would be a good one for our northern neighbors. So I'm just kind of off, to offset our very fluctuating U.S. to Canadian dollars. Sometimes we're you know, quite low. Sometimes we're a little bit better. All right. I um, love the idea of all the testing, and you know, I just want to reiterate to everybody that is that is with us tonight is that truly cruising is the safest way to travel because that's the only mode of travel where you are tested, where you know that everyone is vaccinated, crew and all passengers. You can't go anywhere and know that in any city, in any resort, in any hotel. So uh, truly, I think that cruising is, is definitely the safest way. You showed a lot of itineraries on 2022. Do you have openings yet or is your uh, bookings open for 2023 yet? Not yet, because we don't, we haven't published the itineraries, but they're coming in the next, either the end of this month or the beginning of next, so the next three to four weeks. Okay. We should have all of, um, we'll go through all of 23 and a tad into 24. Because the Antarctica season always goes from November to March, so it'll carry it a little bit into the next year. Yeah. Well, thank you for educating us. What a wonderful product. I have to say, you know, myself and I'm pretty sure everybody else, I, I had heard of um, Atlas, but I really didn't know too much about it. So I wanted to, I'm, I'm glad you came on to let us know. Uh, there is a question about dress code on board. Okay, good, good. So we're very casual. Um, I, I'm wearing a sport coat right now. I wore that onto the ship the day I boarded. Our president saw me and said, Put that in the closet. I never want to see it again on this cruise. So, and that was just a sport jacket, right? So we're we're very casual, um, and that's part of our what we call our luxe adventure. We we chose the word luxe instead of luxury because we feel it's less. We, we don't want to have pictures of chandeliers and formal nights and that kind of thing. We we want you to feel like you're in an elegant setting in a beautiful part of the world, and you're totally relaxed and comfortable. So button down shirt and slacks for the men at night, shorts in the daytime, well, maybe not in Antarctica, but shorts in the daytime in warm weather destinations, uh, and just that, that, that kind of dress code, really relaxed and casual. So you have been sailing for a while. What's the feedback from your clients? What are, what are they saying? What are they talking about? Uh, they're very impressed. They're very happy with the product. Uh, we're getting fairly well-cruised guests. 
Uh, we get well-traveled people, not, not even if there's a few who haven't cruised before, they have traveled a lot. It's folks who fancy time in ports, a lot of time in port, who want to go to the, the destinations that the other ones don't go to. I don't know if you noticed that the, we have an itinerary where it, we have, there's four ports of call in Sicily. Didn't even know there were four places to dock there. But so we're, we're really port intensive uh, and we're getting great feedback. The thing I'm most impressed with there's a buzz in the agent community about us. We're not well known yet, but people say, I've heard about you guys at Atlas and you seem to be creating a buzz. Uh, and so that's a good feeling. Now, we need, the, we need that buzz to transfer into actual bookings, uh, but on occasions like this, hopefully that's what's gonna happen. Um, average demographic, ad, average age of your clients? Uh, we're, we're going for, sort of a 40 plus crowd. Uh, and we do get some kids, not a lot. Okay. We're, we're kid friendly from the viewpoint that we have some triple rooms, no quads. So if you've got a couple of kids, you might need to bring grandma and grandpa along and, and spread them around. Uh, but we're, we're, we're seeing say a 40 to 40 plus crowd we're skewing older than we projected, but again, we're being led by well-traveled folks. Uh, I think they got the message that time is not <laughs> gonna go on forever. And so they're leading the charge and they're very smart ab about travel. And so when they give us high marks, we're, we're pretty thrilled about it. We've been getting really, really good um, marks on board. Wonderful. One more question. Um, in the Mediterranean, and I couldn't see, I didn't uh, catch it. Do you, do you dock in Venice and do you dock in Venice because you're so small? We can cruise down the Grand Canal. And okay. so I'm assuming we can dock somewhere there. Uh, we didn't get a chance to go to Venice this year, uh, but it's on itineraries for next year. And again, that's, that's another one of the things that our size will allow us to do is that we're below the size restriction for the Grand Canal. And if you've not been there, cruising into Venice down the Grand Canal is one of the highlights. It's, it's up there with going under the Golden Gate Bridge, seeing the White Cliffs of Dover, coming into to Hong Kong or Sydney, any of those really memorable harbors is that right, right with it. So, yeah. And and that is what we have all missed over the last two years. So uh, travel is definitely starting. And for all of you who are on with us tonight, it is time to start thinking where you want to go in 2022. And Atlas Voyages has space. So that's a good thing. We can also start thinking about 2023 and looking into 2024. Uh, we've all lost two years of travel. So it's uh, it's a great time to start thinking about where we want to go who we want to go with. So thank you, Paul, for a fabulous presentation. Really enjoyed the education on it. Thank you to all our guests who joined us. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your past travels. And we look forward to helping you plan your future trips. Please reach out to any of your Expedia consultants if you have any questions and let us help start planning your next vacation. Reminder to watch us or follow us on Facebook and also to check our YouTube channel where this and all our presentations are recorded. We are going to be taking a, a break for our travel talks over the holiday season. We'll be starting again in January, on January 13th, 2022. And please watch for an email on our upcoming special, uh, sorry, our upcoming schedules. Please have a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you very much for joining us and we will see you in January. Bye everyone. Thanks everyone. Much appreciated. Hope to see you on Atlas one day. Absolutely.